trumpet mouthpiece. Does it affect and influence your single tongue, double tongue, triple tongue, and any multiple tonguings that you may do as far as the speed, the clarity, and your tone? Stay tuned, I'm Kurt Thompson, and we're going to go through a variety of mouthpieces using the Carnival of Venice, the triple tongue version, from the Bach 1 all the way to the mouthpiece that I currently play on most of the time. Alright, let's dive right in. What you're going to hear me do and what you're going to see in the following clips is me playing the same rendition of the beginning of the triple tongue part of the Arbenz, Carnival of Venice, over and over again, yet with different mouthpieces. I'm going to start with the Bach 1, which is the largest Bach trumpet mouthpiece, and graduate all the way to the mouthpiece that I currently play on for all the high stuff. Actually, for all the stuff that I do, which is, um, you know, I don't really do the classical stuff too much anymore. It's mainly the Bud Brisboy, the Doc Severinsen, the Maynard Ferguson, that kind of stuff for the most part. So um, you'll hear me start on a real true classical type mouthpiece and then um, all the way to the mouthpiece that I currently use. And I would like your input and opinion at the end of this video, whether or not you felt that there was a difference as far as the tone, articulation, or maybe not. Here we go, let's dive right in. Okay, this will be on the Bach 1. Here's our trusty 7C. All right, we have a Bach 10 and a half C. All right, now we're gonna do my unadulterated Neil Sanders 17S. So now we're getting closer to what I would normally be playing. Uh, this hasn't been changed or customized with a Bob Reeves Shanker at all. It's just a pure Neil Sanders 17S.
All right, now we're going to the adulterated Neil Sander 17S with the custom Bob Braves uh, back bore and cup. So it's just a Neil Sanders rim, but no fooling around on the inside, no epoxy. And the last mouthpiece is the very much adulterated 17S Neil Sanders along with the Bob Reeves custom and sleeve and everything else plus all the little duty business inside with the epoxy where I've really finagled it to get up into the Bud Brisboy range. And this is the last mouthpiece I will be testing for tonguing. All right, you heard me start off on the Bach 1, which is the largest of all Bach trumpet mouthpieces, and then I ended right here with my very adulterated hybrid Neil Sanders Bob Reeve, Bob Reeves custom mouthpiece. Let me know what you think. I heard a deterioration in both tone and even the tonguing attack going from the Bach 1, which I kind of felt was the best. Oddly enough, the 7C wasn't too bad either, but it just felt like it degraded as I went down into my more commercial, shallower type of mouthpiece for the stuff I do. And I've noticed over the last many years when I go back and watch some of the stuff where I've done some arbins or tonguing, and I've been on this mouthpiece, <laughs> the one with the epoxy and everything, very shallow. Uh, if I go back and watch some of these old YouTube videos, you can watch them too. Some of the tonguing just sounds like it's just really slapping hard against the mouthpiece and the tone has a little bit of um, static in it. And I heard that today. So I believe after watching this video, you might agree with me that the trumpet mouthpiece that you have actually does affect your tonguing, your single tonguing, your double tonguing, your triple tonguing. And in the context of that tonguing, it does affect your tone. Your tone may actually start to get more staticky, more airy. Like there's something in it, some little crackle or hiss as you go more shallow um, trying to do some of this um, classical tonguing stuff that you may have to do. Now, lucky for me, 99% of my playing does not involve double tongue and triple tongue. Actually, let me correct that. 100% does not these days involve Arbens and Cardinal Venice, uh, Hummel, Haydn, all those kinds of good things uh, that I did in yesteryear. Uh, but that said, I do like to do some of that from time to time. I have a classically trained trumpet player that um, converted uh, many, many years back. And uh, so I do like doing it, but uh, I realized that the equipment that I'm all set up for with the Maynard, the Bud Brisboy, the Doc Severance and stuff that I like to do, and any top tier lead stuff, is not really the right equipment to be doing Arbens, Venice, Brillante, um, Humble, Haydn, Brandt, um, you name it. Uh, it really is not the right equipment and you can hear the deterioration. Let me know in the comments. What do you think? 
As you heard me play the rendition over and over and over again with the Carnival of Venice, the triple tongue part, did you hear a deterioration from using the Bach 1 all the way down to this guy, the Neil Sanders Bob Reeves custom? If you did, leave something in the comments. If you disagree with me and said and thought to yourself, wait a minute, Kurt, you sounded the most awesome on your current mouthpiece and not the Bach 1, well, let me know that. I don't agree with that, but if you happen to think that, let me know. It'd be interesting to see what people think. But you can use what I just did here in this video as a learning tool to dial in the right mouthpiece, especially if you don't play the kind of stuff that I do. If you're mainly a crossover player where you do a little bit of something like jazz or maybe you're sitting in a pops orchestra or a little Broadway show, but mainly you're doing church music and classical music, that kind of thing, uh, you may want to reevaluate what mouthpiece that you're on. On the other hand, if you're like me, we're primarily you were called in to be numero uno in the bands that you play in, and you're not gonna be playing Come to Jesus in whole notes, and you're not gonna be playing in a trumpet choir, or brass quintet, you know, to think Canadian brass, toccata, fugue, and D minor, right? Well, this mouthpiece, it wouldn't really do the job on that. You'd have to get on, on one of these other ones, like the Bach one or, or something like that. So it just depends on what you do. Uh, but anyway, you can use this video as a learning tool and learn from what you just heard me do. And you could even do your own test. You don't have to show it to the world, but you could record yourself. You, now you gotta keep apples to apples, right? You have to record the same thing over and over, but yet use the different equipment. That's how you evaluate. You can't record a little bit of um, the Carnival of Venice and then mess around with something else in the Arvins and then do a little bit of um, the third move of the humble, or whatever, that, that's not going to help you. You have to take the same piece, the same excerpt, and record that over and over and over again, just like I did, to be able to come to the right idea as far as the mouthpiece. Uh, I do believe that the trumpet mouthpiece that you play on does make a difference when it comes to tonguing and your tone, and multiple tonguing, double tongue and triple tongue. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you got any value from this at all, um, you could help me promote this video by giving it a like, a thumbs up, sharing it with some of your friends or on Facebook or Twitter. Maybe even, well, you can't do it on Instagram, but, well, maybe you can. But anyway, if you do all that, that helps promote this video. And I've been hearing that YouTube uh, will pick it up in their, in their Google bots and all that kind of stuff and get it up in front of other people. And if you haven't subscribed, I'm here to tell you there are a million other videos that are similar to this that will help you in some way or another. I'm Kurt Thompson. My site is trumpetsizzle.com. I'll see you in the next one. Wow. I don't know how that got quite like that, but... It did.